Welcome and good afternoon, Europe. Welcome and good morning, America. Welcome and good evening, Asia, to this webinar about the UN International Day of Friendship celebrated today and the case of Taiji Men in uh, Taiwan. Today is celebrated uh, by Taiji Men is the UN International Day of Friendship. One world faces, our world faces many challenges, crises, and uh, forces of division, such as poverty, violence, and human rights abuses, among many others, that undermine peace, security, development, and social harmony among the world peoples. To confront those crises and challenges, their root causes must be addressed by promoting and defending a shared spirit of human solidarity that takes many forms, the simplest of which is friendship. Through friendship, we can contribute to the fundamental shifts that are urgently needed to achieve lasting stability, weave of safety net that will protect us all and generate passion for a better world where all are united for the great good. Taiji Ben teachings are fully in line with these objectives and the young Dizzy it is educating in this spirit are uh, one of the cornerstone of tomorrow's world. It is in 2011 that the United Nations adopted a resolution by which it chose a specific day, the 30th of July, to put the value of friendship on its radar and celebrate the power of love and kindness. The UN hereby recognized the relevance and importance of friendship as a noble and valuable sentiment in the lives of human beings around the world. The idea of a World Friendship Day was first proposed in Paraguay in July 1958 by Dr. Ramon Artemio Braccio during a dinner with friends in Puerto Pinasco, a town located about 200 miles from the capital city of the country, Ascension. Out of this humble meeting of friends, the World Friendship Crusade was born. Since then, 30th July has been faithfully celebrated as Friendship Day in Paraguay every year and has progressively been adopted by several other countries. In parallel, the World Friendship Crusade has lobbied the United Nations for many years to recognize this date of 30th July as World Friendship Day. And finally, on the 20th of May, 2011, General Assembly of the United Nations decided to designate this date as the International Day of Friendship. Friendship between peoples, countries, cultures, and individuals can inspire peace efforts and presents an opportunity to build bridges between communities by honoring cultural diversity, by promoting dialogue among civilizations, solidarity, mutual understanding, and reconciliation. To mark the International Day of Friendship, the UN encourages governments, international organizations, and civil society groups to hold events, activities, and initiatives that contribute to the efforts of the international community towards promoting a dialogue among civilizations, solidarity, mutual understanding, and reconciliation. International Friendship Day celebrations happen to occur on different dates in late July or early August in different countries. In India, for example, they celebrate it on the first Sunday of August. 
In Argentina, it has turned into a very popular mass phenomenon. Seats in most restaurants, bars, and other establishments are often completely booked a week before the celebration. In Taiwan, Taiji Men is responding to the call of the United Nations by mobilizing all its human forces, not only to celebrate and enjoy this special day, but to give a new impetus to its program of solidarity with victims of injustice in Taiwan. In particular, vulnerable and anonymous victims of undue or arbitrary treatments and harassment by the National Taxation Bureau. Tajimen is their voice in Taiwan, but it is also their voice on the global stage, as a video that we will now watch will show you. Faith and political leaders met at the nation's capital on Tuesday, July 13th, for what organizers called the most important religious freedom event of the year. The three-day IRF summit advocates for religious freedom with a goal of tackling discrimination around the world. Former U.S. Ambassador for International Religious Freedom Sam Brownback helped launch the meeting with a focus on international bipartisanship. This is an event sponsored by the International Religious Freedom Secretariat. All the major religions of the world are represented. And we've got one mantra, religious freedom for everybody, everywhere, all the time. It was important for Brownback to tout the conference's diversity in both its attendees as well as within their organizing co-chairs. Dr. Katrina Lantos-Sweat is the former chair of the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom. I was very honored to be asked to serve as co-chair because one of the things that we want to underscore throughout this uh, summit is that international religious freedom is a cause that brings people together. I'm a Democrat. Sam Brownback is a Republican. Those differences are irrelevant when it comes to fighting for the fundamental rights of people around the world to live their lives in accordance with the dictates of their own conscience. Many individuals and groups attended the summit to raise awareness for their freedom causes. One of the more prominent participants is the Action Alliance to Redress 1219, a coalition that seeks justice in the Taiji Men Qigong Academy case. Taiji Men Qigong Academy is a spiritual group in Taiwan and the U.S. They believe they are being religiously persecuted in democratic Taiwan through a tax evasion indictment 24 years ago that has reached Taiwan's Supreme Court. The members of Taiji Men Qigong Academy are here at Washington, D.C. to raise international awareness of our case and call on the government officials of Taiwan to stop persecuting us and return the sacred land to Taiji Men Qigong Academy. So we want to call out to um, government and other religious groups and spiritual groups that taxation should not be used as a tool to persecute um, religious groups and that f the freedom of religion and belief should be safeguarded. In a July 13, 2007 ruling, the Taiwan Supreme Court found Tai Chi Men Qigong Academy not guilty of tax evasion and cleared the group of all charges. But Taiwan's Taxation Bureau disregarded the court decision and continued to impose taxes on Taiji Men Qigong Academy. Kenneth Jacobson, a professor of law at Philadelphia's Temple University, spoke at the summit and summarized his years of research on the Taiji Men Qigong Academy case. Taiwan is an island of democracy, a beacon of democracy in an area that has absolute turmoil, political turmoil, as well as oppression. But what has happened here has emerged from the conduct of some rogue bureaucrats and government officials that has now been tolerated by the government itself. During a 2010 public hearing in the Legislative Yuan, Taiwan's Ministry of Finance openly agreed to resolve the case within two months. That has still not occurred. As a result, Taiji Men Qigong Academy's sacred land was auctioned and nationalized on August 21, 2020. While Dr. Katrina Lantos Sweat reserved opinion on the case, she acknowledged that an injustice has occurred. There's growing concern among a range of 
legal experts and people who really understand the rule of law that this is a situation where an injustice has occurred that needs to be rectified and acknowledged. It was important to the Action Alliance to affirm the persecution against Taiji Man Qigong Academy on U.S. soil, where Taiji Man Qigong Academy and its leader, Dr. Hong, have been welcomed openly in years past as international ambassadors of peace and goodwill. The mayor of the District of Columbia does hereby proclaim March 22, 2000, as Taiji Man Qigong Academy Day in Washington, D.C. So Mayor Harris welcomes Dr. Hong. And he declares September 16th today as Dr. Hong Day. We congratulate you. Tom Bates, mayor of the city of Berkeley, hereby proclaim August 5th, 2005 to be Federation of World Peace and Love Day in the city of Berkeley. Attendees heard many similar stories during the inaugural multi-day summit, where its main goal was to unite and help one another find solutions and prevent problems from reoccurring. Sam Brownback encouraged foreign policy and religious leaders to work together to solve foreign policy issues. We just really got to get the civil society and religious leaders together to stand for each other. If we can get these relationships built across religions, I think we can really address a number of problems. And this is Taiji Min wishing you love. <laughs>Hello. Seems that there is a connection problem. Yes, okay. He's taking a seat. No. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you so much. <laughs> I hear some reverb here. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Please go ahead when you are ready. You should unmute yourself, Conrad because you are unmuted in the other position, but not in this position. And now you hopefully hear. And see. Thank you so much for this invitation and thank you so much for introducing. And I'm sorry for the technical um, situation. I hope it's solved now and that you can hear and see me well. <clears throat> yes, uh, my name is uh, Konrad Svenninger. And I am one of the founders of Soteria International, who in 2007 was created to stand up for the human, human rights. Me, myself, I'm from Sweden. I was brought up in a society where we didn't really consider human rights as an issue that needed further protection. We've had the sensation that the government was already good, that society was taking care of us. And only later on in my life, I realized that many people in just following their heart, following what is in their conviction of how life should be done, can still be persecuted by the government in different ways, sometimes very harshly, directly, and sometimes in more insidious ways, as we will see. So I am here and I just exchanged place with Camilla Marin, who will also speak later, 
and we're very happy to be with us. And we're happy again to be invited to speak at a happy occasion, like to celebrate friendship. It's a wonderful thing. And indeed, when we look at um, human rights, there is this struggle to uphold it between us. And a struggle on one way also forges friendship between us. And I believe that in these days, many of the institutions that have been set to safeguard the progression of society towards increased tolerance and respect for the human rights are in our latest decades and years even more increasingly facing some difficulties. And in that, it is such a, a great and happy occasion to see us come together. Because the governance cannot by itself safeguard human rights. That would be like asking the wolf to guard the sheep. And especially in our times now, there was in, in Sweden, actually the Council of Science, they called for a meeting 22nd of April this year on the theme politics versus experts or expertise. I was wanting to debate this issue that we have that today the, the interpretation right of facts is taken over by the politicians uh, more and more leading to a possible populism. This uh, seminar was in the streams of the COVID crisis, how that has been handled internationally and also nationally. As this, does it become a problem between the expertise and the more objective reality and pol politics and populism? And in that field is where many of the human rights breaches take place. And that is why the experts, like my dear colleagues, are, uh, are so important. As a note to that, I myself am not a doctor but I'm happy to be with you. Uh, there are, of course, the, the friendship of the practitioners. All the people who face obstacles, face hardships when they want to live life according to their conviction. Let it be a religion, let it be another form of freedom of conscience. When we start to see that others face similar problems. It can be of a lesser degree, like social stigmatization and so on, or it can be at a very hard degree, like people being imprisoned even today. It forges a bond, a friendship, a fraternity. And I would say that circle also needs the outer circle of people who stand up for the inner circle's right to stand. And that is where we are, and that is where we are uniting uh, today in this celebration and in the continuous efforts that has been done. So the difficulty of the functioning within the major institutions, such as also the United Nations, is at the same time challenged um, by what Dr. Alan Rhodes calls the debasement of human rights in an era where many things are discussed and, and being included in the discussion of human rights, the fundamental human rights, such as the freedom of conscience and belief, risk to be drowned in many other more popular subjects. And these two things together to have an unstable institutional um, area, and then at the same time, a kind of undermining of the very foundations of what are human rights or what is to be discussed within the human rights has created a landscape where ever more we need to um, bring in the ceaseless efforts of many of you colleagues here in the articles, in the contributions to seminars such as this one, in the ceaseless dissemination of a more objective expertise based truth about these things. Because indeed, when in Sotria, when we have looked on the cases that we have met, mostly in Europe where we have our base, we see how popularized versions of facts, of reality, so pumped out through media, 
mediabolization, I think, is uh, Mr. Foutre's uh, term for this, or that's where I heard it. And it's like a, a public conviction. This is needs to be met by facts. This needs to be uh, faced also with experts like you. Sometimes we have seen these cases that has had such a structure are numerous in, in Europe, like Ananda Sisi, like the Misa case, like Archeon, OKC, Guru Jara. Sometimes the decision goes in the right direction by the court, as in also your case, which is a very positive and encouraging aspect. Sometimes it has not yet fallen in that favor. And sometimes, paradoxically, one Supreme Court of one nation would free, as in the Misa case, while another would not yet come to that conclusion. So it is a field where the ceaseless letting out of a more objectified and expert-based opinion is of absolute importance. And I think that the Taiji Man case shows this precisely how you are, you are freed. It has been proven that you are not wrong. And still there is a stigmatization, still the, the very details like the financial aspects, it's, it becomes that persecution. And that is what we will see and see and has seen through the history that it's never put out like a, a discrimination, a direct attack, very few times, sometimes indeed with police and, and uh, anti-terror corps and so on. But mostly it's done in these more insidious ways, like there you lost something in the tax, there you didn't do this, you didn't do that. This, how some people can be abused within the legal system is a big question. Those who can be considered to be outside society, by society itself. And I think this is a very important question for the futures of our democracies to look, how do we look into this not being completely equal to the law and also to make every nation what also Taiwan still needs to do to rectify the wrongs that have been done so that it's not only a conviction, but also a, a compensation of the mistakes done there. And with this, I wish, um, I, I, again, I want to express my gratitude for this invitation and for the rest of the speakers here for, for the work that is done. And during the years from 2007, when Soteria was founded and onwards, this to stand side by side for the rights, these fundamental rights of brothers and sisters who come in a sometimes dangerous and many times very uncomfortable situation where they on their own skin, so to say, pay the price of a society that has not yet matured enough to really value this avant-garde work of exploring life from your heart and all the values that that brings to our humanity individually and as a society is something that should be praised and should be supported by society instead of in fearsome suspicion turn its worst side towards these associations. And in that friendship and that spirit of friendship, I'm um, again congratulating Taji Men for the success and again, urging the Taiwanese authorities to do its uttermost to also make sure that the policy following will not, first of all, we secure that such things will not happen in the future and also rectify the wrongs that have been done. So thank you for that. And if there will be any questions, I'd be happy to take them. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Schoeninger, uh, for your views and your perception of the situation of uh, Taiji Ben and uh, Harassment they have been they have faced have been facing now for about uh, 25 years in a democratic uh, country uh, like uh, Taiwan, putting back their issue in a broader context. Uh, as you said, there are several sorts of uh, and several forms of uh, persecution, uh, religious persecution, 
And uh, some of those forms are unfortunately very effective, uh, although they are not on the radar of uh, the international communities, uh, because uh, fiscal harassment is not very sexy for, for the media. Uh, but it is a reality and uh, really a very, 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 a lot of suffering have uh, in, in been inflicted to the disease and uh, all the members of uh, Taiji Men in Taiwan and, and also abroad. So thank you for sharing your thoughts and your feelings about uh, this issue again. And I will now give the floor to Mrs. Uh, Daniela uh, Bo Bovolenta, uh, <clears throat> so who works for uh, Bitter Winter uh, magazine and who is uh, from Italy. Uh, Mrs. Bovolenta, the floor is yours, and maybe you will want to tell us a bit more about your work for uh, Bitter Winter. Thank you. Thank you so much for your invitation. And um, I'm starting with uh, Francis de Sales. Francis de Sales, the 17th century Bishop of Geneva, who was uh -huh. canonized as a saint by the Roman Catholic Church, wrote that friendship is the most dangerous form of love. In a real friendship, we open our hearts to our friends and become totally vulnerable. But the depth of this communication also offers great rewards. In reflecting on, in, on the International Day of Friendship, celebrated yesterday, and, uh, and the Teiji Men case, there are three images uh, that come to my mind. The first is Dr. Hong, the leader, Shifu, of Taiji Men, becoming honorary vice president of the Association of World Citizens in 2000 and is executive vice president in 2012. The Association of World Citizens was founded by a well-known American peace activist, Douglas Matton, in 1975 and was granted a consultative status uh, at the United Nations Economic and Social Council. It is uh, appropriate to mention Dr. Hong's role in the Association of War Citizens in this event because uh, the organization founded by Douglas Matton uh, played an important role in the contemporary evolution of the concept of friendship. Until the 19th century, friendship was a relationship with people uh, we see often, and there was no political or cultural notion of friendship within the world's people. This notion was born among the philo philosophers and the esoteric masters, such as Madame Blavatsky, the founder of the Theosophical Society, who wanted to promote a universal friendship going beyond differences uh, in religion and culture but it quickly became an ideological slogan used by socially, socialist political parties and later appropriated by the Soviet Union, which made it suspicious to many. The Association of World Citizens was one of the organizations that promoted the idea that while the friendship between states or nation may be just a rhetorical, hardly believable formula, what was possible was uh, the friendship be between individual persons of different nations, religions, and cultures. Creating opportunities to develop these uh, individual friendships, uh, Matan believed uh, may eventually lead uh, without uh, the need of grand proclamation to a better understanding between uh, different countries. This leads me to the second image the bell of war, peace and love, something I have only seen in pictures and videos and hope to see one day in person. The bell has a spiritual significance in many Eastern and Western religions. Dr. Hong designed and supervised the construction of the bell, which was first rung in Singapore in the year 2000. Today, two bells exist and to the world or did it uh, before COVID-19. Taiji Men invites world political, cultural, and religious leaders to ring them. The best standard has five colors, green, red, yellow, white, and blue. 
They represent the harmony of the five continents, as well as the five elements according to Chinese tradition, wood, fire, water, metal, and earth. On the top of the bed, there is a crystal ball, the dragon fireball. The crystal ball is sustained by two dragon head, symbolizing justice, justice, strength, and wisdom. On the top of the bell uh, are the eight triagrams of the Chinese classic uh, I Ching, the Book of Changes. Around the top uh, of the bell is inscribed the test of uh, love of the world, a declaration of peace. The body of the bell displays four kinds of animals. The mythical one ornament one Kilin, messengers of stability and prosperity, lions playing uh, with a ribbon ball, symbols of safety and darkness, phonisex, uh, a celestial symbol of peace, and dragons chasing a, peer, a pearl, signifying harmony and the search for a world free of pain and fear. One, uh, on the two, four sides uh, of the bell, uh, a decoration includes 16 knobs, for a total of 64 knobs representing the 64 laws of the nature. The bell also displays the signatures of the world leaders who rang it. Around the bell, genuine friendship were born. Some saw the bell only once, but carried the memory with them. Others became regular participants in the, in the bell events, and this friendship generated a movement for interreligious in, and the intercultural dialogue that was noticed by the United Nations and other international organizations. As an Ita Italian and Roman Catholic, I will take this opportunity to remember Bishop Camillo Balin, apostolic vicar of Northern Arabia, who died in 2020. He rang the bell of peace with Dr. Hong, and is uh, remembered as a great defender of the rights of Arab Catholics uh, and scholar of Oriental Catholic liturgies. There is a great contrast between the festive Im image of young people and celebrities gathering around the bell and Taiji Mendizi protesting in the streets of Taipei against the injustice of the task case. I cannot help thinking that some of the young people involved uh, may be the same, smiling and performing dancing, dances and songs around the bell and protesting in the streets, uh, going uh, from joy to sadness. This is, however, what friendship uh, is all about. This, this is uh, was a youth, uh, as the title uh, of a book they publisher say, was told and become, uh, became uh, friends in good times and bad times. Friends for the good times only are not real friends. Friendship cemented the true hardship and suffering is real and may change the world. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, Mrs. Bovolenta, uh, for shedding some light on the issue of uh, friendship from a different uh, uh, angle, which uh, really enriches the debate that will uh, take place uh, today on the International Day of uh, Friendship, and also focusing on the importance of uh, interreligious uh, dialogue. I will now give the floor to Dr. Massimo Intervigne, the founder of uh, CESNU, the Center for Studies on New Religions and uh, editor-in-chief of uh, Bitter Winter uh, magazine. Dr. Intervigne, the floor is yours. Thank you. When I reflect about the scholarly discussions about friendship, one of the things that impresses me is how many of them, and for centuries, were based on a mistake, on a typo. In several manuscripts of the lives and opinions of eminent philosophers, written in Greek by Diogenes Laertius in the third century of the Christian era, we read a famous statement attributed to Aristotle, reading in Greek, O philoi, udeis philos, whose translation will be, my friends, there is no friend. And that traveled through the centuries, through Immanuel Kant, through Friedrich Nietzsche, and Jacques Derrida, 
and they all use this quote to strengthen their point that friendship is really a delusion. And this point is still important for the modern anti-religious critique of concepts such as spirituality, love and peace, including those advanced by Taiji Men. Nietzsche would say when uh, love and peace uh, are impossible uh, because there is no love, there is no peace, uh, and there are no friends. However, Aristotle never said this. Already at the end of the 16th century, a scholar called Isaac Casobon, who was a very fastidious textual critic, demonstrated that uh, Ophiloi is a typo, and in the text of Diogenes Laertius should be replaced by Oi Philoi. It seems a small difference. In fact, it's the same Greek letter, Omega, but with a different diacritic and a small letter I, a Iota subscribe, but this small difference is crucial. With Oi, rather than O, the sentence translates he who has too many friends uh, has no friends uh, at all. And so translated, uh, not only does Aristotle's uh, dictum makes perfect sense, but it seems to have been written more than 2,000 years in advance for Facebook, where we all have uh, uh, thousands uh, of friends uh, the limit is 5,000, but of course, uh, they are not real friends. And this abuse of the word friends by Facebook is not uh, without consequences. The French 16th century philosopher Michel de Montaigne, despite making the usual mistake about the quote of Aristotle, is credited with putting friendship again at the center of Western philosophy. And, uh, he tried to answer in advance the objection that uh, friendship is just a sugary delusion and doesn't exist in real life. And he answered by returning at the classical Roman definition of friendship by the scholar and lawyer Cicero, who identified three components of friendship, common purposes, benevolence, and charity. Interestingly, and I would say interestingly for uh, Taiji Men, uh, Cicero saw the root of benevolence and charity in conscience. In fact, uh, Cicero was the first scholar in history who used the word conscience, conscientia, in the modern moral sense of this word. We can summarize Cicero's theory of friendship by saying that uh, friendship is possible when two or more persons who have some common purposes in life systematically act towards each other with benevolence and charity. Charity is caritas, which is a non-erotic form of love guided by conscience. Unfortunately, however, the same Nietzsche, who criticized the friendship and religion, also offered a, a destructive criticism of conscience. For Nietzsche, conscience is something that creates feelings of guilt and represses our natural drive to go beyond the rules and tradition. And this criticism has remained deeply ingrained in our culture, it has been used by Freud and Marx, and thus created a widespread skepticism toward conscience. This explains, I believe, why Dr. Hong, the founder of Taiji Men, is uh, the uh, sorry, the leader of Taiji Men, is important because uh, he offered uh, to our contemporary world a crucial contribution when he started touring the world, going from country to country and rehabilitating the idea of conscience. And Dr. Hong's efforts were so successful 
that the United Nations established an International Day of Conscience in 2019. Just this month, July 2021, commemorating the UN resolution that established the International Day of Conscience, Dr. Hong said that conscience is the lighthouse of the soul, providing hope and direction for sailors on a dark sea. A society with an awakened conscience will have a stronger cooperative power to break through the current darkness. So the International Day of Conscience has a special relation with the International Day of Friendship, because conscience, as Cicero knew, makes benevolence and charity and hence true friendship believable and possible. What happened to Teiji men with the injustice vested on them by physical persecution first and then persecution through taxes was a tragedy. But it was also the opportunity to prove that what they tell the world about conscience and friendship is not just made of empty words. When thousands and thousands of young and less young people took to the streets to protest the Taiji men injustice, a friendship rooted in conscience appeared to borrow Dr. Hong's word as a lighthouse of the soul, proving that yes, benevolence and charity directed to a common goal are a reality, not a delusion. One additional minor miracle was that with their protest, the Taiji men deeply made many friends beyond Taiwan and throughout the world. We here today are part of this friendship. Friendship is real and Nietzsche is wrong. While we ideally walk with the Dizzy, in friendship and calling for justice. We live this love between friends called charity. And we savor the truth of the words of uh, Apostle Paul in the Bible, in 1 Corinthians 13, 13, faith, hope, and charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Intravigne, for sharing with us your thoughts about the philosophical and uh, historical dimension of the uh, friendship issue. And, and I hope that uh, Facebook fans and addicts maybe uh, will remember that uh, whoever has many friends has no friends uh, at all. <laughs> so thank you for this wisdom that you have uh, uh, shared with us. And I will now uh, ask uh, Mr. Hans Noot from the Noot Foundation in the Netherlands uh, to take the lead of uh, the debate, as you will now uh, introduce a video and uh, a number of uh, uh, witnesses uh, from uh, Daiji Men uh, organization. Thank you very much. I'm assuming you can hear me all. Yes, I can hear you at least. Excellent. <laughs> that helps in a discussion like this. In a minute, it will be my privilege to introduce to you some witnesses who will be speaking to us. Uh, but before we do so, allow me to paint a very quick picture of why this case between the Taiwan tax authorities and Taiji Men is so noteworthy. And let me put up a spoiler alert here. Um, the, the Taiwan tax authorities are no friends to the Taiji men. And here's a summary of uh, the irregularities from the side of the tax authorities. They have trumped up non-sustained charges of fraud in violation of the Tax Collection Ad Act. They have been inconsistently changing tax demands and claimed illegal fi heavy fines. They made use of illegal raids. They confiscated land and other assets of the Taiji Man leader 
after which some of them has been auctioned off. They have not just frozen defendant's bank accounts, but even illegally withdrew money from his bank accounts. They have cut off the utility power from the defendant's facilities. They have publicly slandered the defendant and were involved in defamation using a series of instruments, including inhumane interrogation practices and media crews. They threatened and harassed individuals to the point of causing trauma. They unlawfully imprisoned people. They created an illegal false anti-cult organization. They withheld information from the public. They lied in court about surveys. And they paid bonuses to tax officers as incentive to put pressure on the Taiji men to pay. Shockingly, we observe that apparently in Taiwan, perpetrators can get away with impunity, even after the courts have clearly spoken out against them. The cost of all this has been scapegoating, a practice of blaming an innocent group of people for societal misfortune. There has been job loss of individuals and intense personal family trauma. It has cost un unnecessary high legal fees for the, tax for the taxpayers. <clears throat> the campaign has caused public distrust against the rule of law, as well as a diminishing image of the tax office in the eyes of the public. Moreover, it confirms the message that corruption pays off. It causes religious and non-NGOs to go underground rather than have, than have them do their charitable work in society. It degenerates the cultural value system of society and destroys a healthy conscience of individuals. And internationally, it damages relationships with befriended nations, which has an effect on trade and national and regional security. One wonders as to the motive of a campaign of harassment for more than two decades. Is it political? even if Taiji Men is not a political, does not take a political stance? Is it based on rumor and fake news or slander about illegal or dangerous cults? Or lack of understanding of the constitutional right of freedom of religion? Is it about hatred towards traditional mainland Han Chinese heritage or a personal vendetta perhaps? Is it a personal financial gain by particular bureaucrats? The main argument is unclear to me, as many of the above make little sense. For the Taiji men, it would have been cheaper to pay off their tax claims, yet in their belief in justice and integrity, they refuse to do so. At least their objective is clear. I conclude that this case can be summarized as one that is about corruption versus integrity. Now let's hear what some of the witnesses have to say. We're honored to have them in our midst. First, we will hear from Professor Chai Lin Chang, who will give us more of an historical, social, political perspective. Dr. Chang is a doctor of laws in national, at National Chang University, and is specialized in sociology, sociology of religion, social research and statistics, and religious ceremony. We will now hear from Dr. Lin. Uh, Dr. Chang, please take the floor. Yeah, I... Dear friends, I'm incredibly honored to be invited to speak about the Taijiman case. As a religious scholar, I examine the Taijiman case from a somewhat different perspective than jurists and political scholars, because it may be observed and analyzed from legal, political, and religious perspectives. The Taijiman case, which occurred in Taiwan in 1996 following the end of martial law, is essentially a case of unjust detention, wrongful prosecution, and a case that should not have occurred. In the context of the entire history of religious persecution, the Taijiman case is a high-profile case among many cases of religious persecution. What makes this such a well-known case? What makes this an unjust prosecution case? The fundamental reason is that when President Li Denghui assumed office, the Taiwanese government began to make Taiwan a more democratic and free country, 
In 1987, President Jiang Jingguo lifted martial law. Surprisingly, in order to demonstrate his commitment to reform, President Li Denghui authorized and empowered the legal and administrative institutions to pursue religious and spiritual groups. Li Denghui's image was improved, but as a result, several new faiths in Taiwan were targeted, such as the Song Qili case, the Taijiman case, and the Chan Master Miao Tian case. Almost all of these cases have been rectified. The Taijiman case has likewise been resolved, with the exception of the tax case concerning the year 1992. It was still being pursued by our judicial and administrative systems. In light of humanity's religious freedom history, we know that President Franklin D. Roosevelt stated that humanity has four essential freedoms. Freedom from fear, freedom from want, freedom of speech, and the fourth fundamental freedom. What exactly is it? It's about religious liberty. We discovered that the idea of religious freedom is addressed 16 times in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the ICCPR, International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, and the ICESCR, International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights. One of the articles in the aforementioned documents discusses the notion that those in positions of power should allow believers of a religion or belief or its leader to exercise their property rights as religious practitioners. When we examine the constitutions of democratic countries around the world, it is clear that in order to uphold the principle of separation of church and state, a government must allow religionists, religious organizations, religious groups, and religious people the freedom to enjoy tax reductions or tax exemption as long as their religion is legal under the nation's constitution. Taijiman is a legal spiritual organization. According to our Han Chinese religious tradition, believers making a small offering to their master is in line with the custom of expressing respect to a master. During my religious studies, I've observed believers kneeling and offering red envelopes to their masters in many sects. Buddhism, Taoism, folk Confucianism, health clubs, and organizations that study the Book of Changes all experience this phenomenon, which we call the ritual of showing respect to a master. The masters of these numerous religious and religious-related organizations are pleased to take their followers' gifts, and the government will not tax them. Why is our government still unwilling to admit that it made a mistake concerning the taxes for 1992 in the Taijiman case? Taijiman's land was even seized and forcibly auctioned by the government. When you look at the history of Taiwan's democratic and political evolution, it's evident that the Taiwanese government owes Taijiman justice and should clear its name. Of course, Taijiman's disciples have every right to urge the government to return the confiscated land and money to Taijiman. Of course, Taijiman should have their own land and academies which were acquired through the money gifts given by the disciples to their master, Dr. Hong. No sacred place of any other religious or spiritual organization has been auctioned and confiscated by the government through its public power. In all fairness, the executive branch of the government of Taiwan owes Taijiman the justice it deserves. Taiwan is a democratic and free nation, and the battle for the rectification of the Taijiman case has been going on for 25 years. Shouldn't the government of Taiwan return justice to Taijiman? We hope that the Taijiman brothers and sisters will shout loudly, Give us justice! Now is the time to restore our freedom, to preach our beliefs, respect our master, and practice Qigong. That was a clear statement. Um, and I would like to introduce to you as well, um, Carrie Fang, who will give us a legal perspective as she is a lawyer, uh, has been working in Taiwan for 25 years, uh, often on the high profile economic disputes. She's seasoned in dealing with criminal cases. She's passionate about the need for tax and legal reform in Taiwan. 
And as such, she volunteers her expertise and time uh, to bring it about. Mrs. Fang, please take the floor for your statement. Uh, I believe we have a video first. Oh, I was not aware. Because it's ruined like this, now we have no way to save this place anymore. And how would Shifu feel if he sees this? He has put his heart and soul into this place. Who can restore our 25 wasted years? Who can restore this place for us? Ms. Fang, will you take the floor? Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Carrie Fang, a lawyer from Taiwan. It's my pleasure to participate in this conference for the International Day of Friendship. In our exper experiences, in the way to difference of justice, we forged many friendships of writers people like you all over the world. As we know, Tai Jiman test case a 25-year-long prosecution case in Taiwan was originated from a political purge motivated by Taiwan's government to against a number of spiritual movements that meant Tai Jiman was caught in a crossfire and fell into an unexpected criminal case. However, even on July 13, 2007, Taiwan's Supreme Court found Tai Jinman not guilty of tax evasion or any other charges. The National Taxation Bureau disregarded this court decision and commitment they have ever made. The mis that led one, the Ministry of Finance agreed to close the Tai Jinman test case in the pub public hearing of the legislative Yen on June 17, 2010. Today, I'm going to talk about the agreement that the National Taxation Bureau met with Dr. Hong and Tai Jinmen in the internal ministerial meeting of the, the executive yen on December 9th, 2011. On December 9th, 2011, the executive yen organized an interministerial meeting the meeting was hosted by 
the then Secretary General of the Executive Yuan and 30 attendees were invited. Those include, included the then Minister of Finance Ministry, the then Deputy Minister of Job Ministry, the then Director of Taipei National Taxation Bureau, Tai Chi Man Dizi, and some social writers people. And then it was resolved that the criminal indictment could no longer serve as the basis of taxation. The Taipei Na National Taxation Bureau will conduct a pu public survey in to investigate the nature of the red envelope envelopes and the National Taxation Bureau to mm -hmm. handle Tai test case in accordance with the results of this public survey. If the result of such a survey concluded the nature of the red envelopes as gifts, then Tai Chi Man test case should be closed accordingly. In case the survey concluded as tuition fee, then the income in this case should be taxed in accordance with relevant regulations. As from 19 December 2000, 11, the Taipei National Taxation Bureau officially announced the public survey through newspapers, their websites, and their own bulletin boards. During the survey, they, collect, they collected 7,401 responses. 100% 1 of the 7,401 respondents indicated that the rate and values were gifts, and no one declared them as tuition. The outcome of the public survey is completely lawful and probative and are sufficient to prove that the red envelopes are indeed gifts. Mm -hmm. The agreement to follow the resolution in this meeting and to deal the case with the results of this survey means both parties to this case have reached a consensus on the investigation method and on the agreement of fact-finding. So a binding governmental agreement has been formed. Based on the principle of good faith, the principle of legitimate expectation, and the principle of administrative self-restraint, self the Ministry of Finance and the National Taxation Bureau should have been bound by the agreement and should honor, should honor the resolution and survey result to revoke the unlawful tax sanction on Tai Chi Man to fulfill this governmental agreement, but they did not do it. So in November, 2013, 33 Taiwan's legislators jointly proposed and co-signed a motion to request the Ministry of Finance to revoke the, e the illegal sanctions in accordance with the resolution of this inter-ministerial meeting and the publicly announced investigation result so as to implement the basic human rights guaranteed by the Constitution. The National Taxation Bureau still hasn't closed Tai Chi Man tax case. They totally ignored all the clear evidences and all these recommendations and still continued to impose unjustified taxes on Tai Chi Man to this day. August 21st, 2020, the National Taxation Bureau claimed and made Tai Chi Man's sacred land auctioned and nationalized. Yes, it's hard to believe that such a human rights abuse happened in Taiwan, a state democratic country. This tax case has haunted Tai Chi Man for a quarter of a century. It's highlighted that Tai Chi Man case is not a private taxpayer case of Dark Hong, and it's not merely a domestic Taiwan tax case law matter either, but a serious matter of principle and of justice and of religious liberty, and it should be aware of the world worldwide. In this 21st century, people still face 
poverty, violence, and human rights abuses. Such problems will undermine peace, security, and development of the world. The most serious problems of these are human rights abuses. Therefore, issues of fairness and justice should be taken seriously by the world, just like the spirit of the, the International Day of Friendship. Maintaining fairness and justice is the basic element of promoting social stability and sustainability of the world. How to truly maintain fairness and justice? That should be everyone have love in their hearts. I hereby appear on and call for the Taiwan government to awaken its conscience, to revoke the illegal tax bill and the illegal auction, and return the confiscated land to Dr. Hong and Tai Jiman in accordance with the law and clear the names of Tai Jiman's Shifu and deeds, return justice to them. The above is my share today. Thank you all and have a nice weekend. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Fang. Yes. Well, your, your legal uh, perspective is highly appreciated. We will now be privileged to hear to, uh, Vivian Chang. She's a Ditsi who went to the United States to study computer art um, uh, 24 years ago. She's a motion graphics designer. She has worked for large broadcasting, educational and journalism companies. Her work has been seen on television, in the social media and on the web. She promotes peace and love by volunteering in Taiji Men. Dr. Chang, would you please take your, give your statement? Hello, thank you, Mr. Note, for the introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. First of all, I'm honored to participate in today's online forum. It's great to see so many new kind, like-minded friends here. Um, let me introduce myself. My name is Vivian Chen. I have been in the United States for 24 years. I currently live in the Washington DC metropolitan area. I'm a Tai Chi Man Dizi and I have been a member of Tai Chi Man Qigong Academy for almost 25 years. There is a saying in Taiwan that good things, <coughs> excuse me, there's a saying in Taiwan that good things should be shared with good friends. My mother, brother, sister, and niece who are in Taiwan are all Taiwan, are all Tai Chi Man Dizi. Vivian, United, you, can I introduce and interrupt for a minute? Did you have a presentation as well? Oops. Sorry, did I turn my camera off? I'm sorry. <laughs> I think Just I reminding you. turned my camera off. Did you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, but... Uh... Do I, I should, should I start from the beginning or no? Do you have do you have did you have a, a PowerPoint as well? A PowerPoint? Oh, maybe not. Maybe I'm mistaken. Okay, no, never mind. Not. Please go ahead. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. Okay. Um, yeah, as I said, I I've been Sorry. to the United States for almost 25 years. And there's a saying in Taiwan that good things should be shared with good friends. My mother, brothers, sister, and niece who are in Taiwan are all Tai Chi Man Dizi. In the United States, my husband and my two sons are also Tai Chi Man Dizi. My husband is Caucasian, but he's very much agree that Tai Chi Man is a great place to pay some ancient Chinese culture and also a place full of love and joy. So he joined Tai Chi Man to practice Qigong with us. We come from different culture, but the whole family can practice together, learn the wisdom of Tai Chi Yin and Yang philosophy from Shi Fu and learn to balance the body, mind and spirit. So there's a lot of consensus between us and there is no culture shock. Even though we do not have a Tai Chi Man Academy on the East Coast, Shi Fu teaches the Di Zi, the Kung Fu of the heart and to feel with the heart. He teaches us to tell good from bad, true from false and right from wrong, and to remind us to act with conscience. 
my Shifu Dr. Hong Daozi, who is committed to promoting the era of conscience movement, also mentioned in the maxim of conscience that humans are endowed with conscience. Conscience is the origin of life and the destination of humanity. It is also the guiding principle of our daily lives. I always remind myself that I must follow my conscience in everything I do. Shifu also said, conscience is like a compass, directing us to the right path of life and leading us to make correct decisions. Shifu's words guide me so that I do not lose the direction of my life, and I find them really useful in raising my children too. I have applied the yin and yang philosophy and wisdom that I learned in Tai Chi Minh to my family and work. I have a very happy family and a happy life. I'm very grateful to my Shifu and to Tai Chi Minh, and I also cherish my relationship with him. My Shifu Dr. Hong Dao has led his deeds around the world on six continents, doing goodwill, culture exchanges, and sharing love and peace. Tai Chi Minh has also been praised by the current and three former presidents of Taiwan. However, it may be hard to believe that such a good organization could be persecuted. But in 1996, a persecutor and a few legal tax office officers tried to destroy Tai Chi Minh by creating a fake case. The prosecutor at the time, Ho, Ho Kuan Ren, claimed that Tai Chi Minh was raising goblins without any evidence, which was ridiculous. Professor Kenneth Jacobson, a principal professor of law at Temple University in Philadelphia and former advisor to US President Bill Clinton, has, scheduled, has, has studied the Tai Chi Minh case for years, saying, I don't think I've seen more abuse of the right of due process in any situation I've seen in the Tai Chi Minh tax case. It is not due process to accuse a human being in a civilized society of raising goblins. The mere statement of that would cause individuals and the stud should cause individuals to question the sanity of the prosecutor. And in any court of law, such an absurd allegation would be thrown out. On July 13, 2007, the criminal, div the, criminal, the criminal division of Taiwan's Supreme Court found Tai Chi Minh not guilty and that it did not owe taxes. However, the National Tax Bu Taxation Bureau continue to issue illegal tax bill to my Shifu and prohibit his property from being disposed of. What is even more absurd is that last August, Tai Chi Minh's property was illegally auctioned in total violation of the law and of human rights. Sadly, the Tai Chi Minh case has been going on for almost 25 years now and has still not been resolved. I'm sorry. The United States is a country that respects freedom of religion, human rights, and the rule of law. Living in the hollow ground of democracy, DC, I had the opportunity to participate in the International Religious Freedom Summit held in DC on July 13th of this year which focus on international religious freedom for everyone, everywhere, all the times, and on creating a powerful collegion of organizations that operate together for the case of religious freedom around the world. The day also marked the 14th anniversary of Tai Chi Minh's acquittal at the conference there were many friends who were persecuted like Tai Chi Minh, and it was show of friendship and support for each other. During the conference, Tai Chi Minh also organized two side events to explain the Tai Chi Minh case. Mr. Sam Brown, co-chair, 
of the IRF 2021, some steering committee who was also on hand to give a speech stated that freedom of religion is a fundamental human rights without which humanity cannot flourish. Professor Kenneth Jacobson, who drove several hours to DC to attend the summit, called upon the leaders of Taiwan to fix the mistakes of the past. And he said, to allow errors to continue to perpetuate a perpetuate mistakes that were made in the past is as bad as, if not worse, than committing those mistakes in the first place. This is travesty and it's a, it is a tragedy too. It is unjust. He repeatedly stressed that Tai Chi Man case should end and it should end now. I learned that we cannot be silent. We must be brave and speak out because silence is an add to the perpetrators and we cannot indulge the mistakes of corrupt officials who continue to make mistakes. I also hope that through this conference, the power of international participants who value human rights and freedom of religion will come up to help Tai Chi Man and to help the Taiwanese government face up the Tai Chi Man case and ex expedite the revocation of the illegal tax bill. So the Tai Chi Man's nearly 25 year long tax injustice can be ended soon. After the conference, the Tai Chi Man brothers and sisters who participate in the conference also took the opportunity to hold protest signs in front of the DC Capitol, hoping that more people would know about the Tai Chi Man case. On March 22, 2000, also at Capitol Hill, Mayor Anthony William of the District of Columbia proclaimed that March 22, 2000 as the Tai Chi Man Qigong Academy Day and he praised Tai Chi Man as an international ambassador of goodwill and peace. Ironically, the same organization there is so internationally honored is being persecuted in Taiwan. I have friends and many, uh, I have family and many friends who live in Taiwan. And I want them to have the same freedom of religion and belief as I do. As Mr. Sam Brown said again, freedom is of religion is a fundamental human right without which humanity cannot flour flourish. Respect for human rights has become a universal value. If the Tai Chi Man case is not resolved and the Taiwanese government does not deal with the few corrupt officials, but allow them to continue to persecute the people and deprive them of their freedom of belief. The people will be treated unequally and in fear, and Taiwan will not become a truly free democratic country with the rule of law. As a result, my family and friends will not be able to enjoy their freedom of belief or continue to better themselves in Tai Chi Man. The Taiwanese government should treat its people like friends with mutual respect, trust, and support. It should take the initiate, initiative to help the people when they are in trouble. I hope that the Taiwan government, the Taiwan government will act with conscience. As Dr. Hong Daozi's my Shifu maxims of conscience say, love is possible through conscience. Human rights are possible through love. Peace is possible through human rights. Thank you all. Thank you, Mrs. Chang. I'm so sorry for having uh, interrupted you. Um, and uh, your That's testimony okay. is so important, but uh, there was a misunderstanding on my side. So again, I'm sorry. Well, um, no <laughs> thank you. We will now like to hear from uh, Jason Tsai, who is also a teacher um, and a senior student 
studying information data analytics at the University of Washington in Seattle. Ms. Tsai, would you add your voice to the conference, please? Hi. Thank you, Mr. Anout. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Jason Tsai, and I'm from Seattle, Washington. It is my pleasure to be able to attend the 2021 IRF Summit at Washington, D.C., where I learned a lot about religious freedom as a basic human right that people should have. Unfortunately, many of the organizations at the event shed light on the struggles that many people from their communities are having due to the religious persecution, often from the government or authorities of power. The Taijiman case is no exception. At present, it is the longest case and the longest court battle for the Taiwanese people who have suffered double persecution by the judicial and tax laws. First of all, I wanna share my story at Taijiman and its importance to me. For me, Taijiman is my second home where I learned a lot about the basics principles of how to behave, such as how to respect others, how to express myself, like presenting here today, since becoming a disciple of Taiji Min, I remember the importance of conscience the most. We have to do things with conscience, and I believe in conscience educations and doing things with conscience every day. My grandmaster, Dr. Hong Daozi of Taiji Min, told us that we must rely on conscience to do anything. Conscience is the voice in everyone's heart and the compass in their hearts which guides us to judge whether our actions are good or bad. The Taijiman case is a question of conscience. Now, I would like to explain the Taijiman case. As a volunteer of the Action Alliance to Redress 1219, which speaks on behalf of the Taijiman legal case that started in 1996, when the government launched a political purge in the form of religious crackdown, in which Taijiman was caught in a crossfire. At the time, Kaohsiung and Shinsu District Prosecutor's Offices investigated Taiji Men and concluded that Taiji Men was operating legally and soon closed the case. However, Prosecutor Ho, without evidence, continued to use their power to investigate Taiji Men using falsified evidence and testimonies against Taiji Men while violating the due process of law. Six, six days before the prosecution, Prosecutor Ho Kuan-ren subpoenaed Shi uh, Yue Shen, the tax collector of the Internal Revenue Service, to cooperate with the perjury. Shi Yue Shen had never been to Taiji Min, nor had he conducted any substantive investigations. He falsely accused Taiji Min as a cram school and suspected it of tax evasion. Prosecutor Ho never gave the Grandmaster an opportunity, so he took Shi Yue Shen's non-positivist statement as evidence and prosecuted it. Regardless of the obvious contradictions and in indictment regarding the nature of the income, the tax bureau directly bills the tax and imposes heavy fines. Some of the falsified evidence include Taiji Min as a cram school, which is not true as the red envelopes, which are gifts to show appreciation to our Sufu, leader of Taiji Men, which are non-taxable items by the Taiwanese tax law. Taiji Men is a nonprofit cultural group promoting philosophy of love and peace through the practice of martial arts. We are a very influential organization because we promoted world tours across six continents and events, such as the cultural performance at the Capitol Hill in Washington, DC, back in the year 2000 at the invitation from the chairman of the U.S. Senate Committee on Foreign Relations. At the same time, Anthony Williams, the mayor of Washington, D.C., commended Taiji Men for their dedication to goodwill and cultural advancement and specifically designated March 22nd of 2000 as the Taiji Men Qigong Academy Day. Although Taiji Men has received international appraisals, Taiji Men is currently facing an existential threat due to the tax agencies of Taiwan treating Taiji Men as a for-profit entity, which is ludicrous because of the 2007 Supreme Court decision that acquitted the defendant from all criminal charges regarding tax evasion. Despite the Supreme Court ruling, 
the tax agency illegally bypassed the court decision and continued to issue tax bills. In 2010, the heads of the tax agencies promised in public to close the case within two months. Ultimately, the case was not resolved and the Taijiman's property was confiscated in 2020. This is an obvious act of violation of freedom of religion and belief. Like what our Shifu said, when there is injustice, we need to fight to correct it. Taijiman's disciples in Taiwan have exhausted all legal means seeking relief, and yet there is no solution in sight. There are many other cases of injustice like Taijiman. Had there been other ways to resolve this, the disciples would have not traveled to DC, Washington, D.C. to appeal for help. I hope the voices of justice from the international community will save Taiwan's democracy from the hands of the few tax officials who lack conscience. This all boils down to the topic of conscience in which my Shifu has been teaching us and reminding us of regularly. This is why brothers and sisters of Taiji Men, Dr. Hong, and I myself are here to seek international support to end this injustice for Taiwan. Through the appeal of the international community for justice, we want to let the Taiwanese government recognize this issue, allowing the government to end the Taiji Men case that has been dragged on for over 25 years. We need to correct these actions of the rogue bureaucrats in Taiwan by awakening their conscience. So we need international help to put an end to this decades long struggle and for the Taiwanese tax agency to return us our land and for Taiwan to establish true democracy. Not only will the end to this case uh, bring justice to Taiji Men, it will also protect taxpayers' rights, bring basic human rights as well as the notion of freedom of religion or belief in Taiwan and abroad. Just like what US Ambassador for International Religious Freedom, Sam Brownback said, what government should do is to protect his people's rights to practice their personal beliefs peacefully and bring the concepts of basic human rights and freedom of religious belief to Taiwan and overseas. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your experience as a disciple of the Taiji men and describing the case. Such testimonials too add credit to the conference. So let me also introduce Yavan Cheng, who works as a compliance officer in the banking industry. Currently, she uh, is uh, uh, in the in a top of one of the top 500 banks, uh, London office. Uh, she joined Chime, uh, Taiji Men 25 years ago. Uh, Mr. Mrs. Cheng, uh, we would love to hear you now. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Note. Hi. Hi, everyone. This is Annie from London. It is a privilege to join the round table today to mark the International Day of Friendship. It's great to see many friends here. The International Day of Friendship is an initiative that follows UNESCO, defining the culture of peace as a set of value, attitude, and behavior that reject violence and prevent conflict. A culture of peace comprises of various elements, including education, sustainable social and economic development, respect for human rights, and love and conscience. Love, peace, and conscience are the core value for human society. Tai Chi Minh has been devoted to realize this core value through various performances, with an aim to improve the peace and safety and the build of the true friendship between people, between country, with the mutual respect, love, selflessness, and altruism. Over the year, Dr. Hong has been leading Tai Chi Man I mean Tai Chi Man member, traveling to 101 country, more than 300 cities to promote peace, conscience, and human rights through more than 3,000 cultural exchange and will lead the summit of love and peace to enhance mutual respect and understanding. Up to date, there are 399 Bearinas from 122 countries, including 
43 head of, head of state, seven Nobel Laureate Prize, and the leaders from all like. During the pandemic, Dr. Hong invented the useful three don't, five does, and six tips in several languages to help everyone, every country to keep safe and healthy. This selfless love and action have gained Dr. Ho and Tai Jiman broad recognition worldwide and successfully brought Taiwan onto international stage. I've joined Tai Jiman group and traveled to New York, Vienna, Moldova, Italy to promote love, peace, and conscience. I witnessed Dr. Ho, how deliver how Dr. Ho delivered a message how the beauty of culture connect each heart regardless gender, race, language. And Dr. Hong's determination on changing the world to a better place. I have learned courage, confidence, and determination, which helped me to build up a new life in a foreign country and middle age. However, such a good group Taijiman was unfairly oppressed in Taiwan. Despite entitled as democracy, Taiwan government had failed to follow the rule of law and did not respect the human rights of its people, including Taijiman, Shifu, and Dizi. In 1996, as mentioned above, Taijiman became a victim of politically motivated crackdown an independent spiritual movement. Prosecutor Ho Kwan then accused Dr. Hong of fraud and tax evasion and filed a proceeding against Dr. Hong, his wife, and the three Taijiman members. On 13 July 2007, Taijiman was acquitted with no fraud, no fraud, no tax evasion, and no violation of tax law. However, the tax agent refused to honor the court ruling, but keep issuing illegal tax bill. In the public hearing in Legislature Yuan on the, in June 2010, the Minister of Finance promised to solve the Taijiman case within two months. That never happened. On August 21, 2020, the Taijiman property intended to be a cultivation center was unlawfully auctioned off and confiscated by the state. The government agent, clearly aware of the illegality of the tax bill and the unlawfulness of the enforcement action, they, however, still went for it for bonus reason. Integrity, dignity, honest conscience, tell right from wrong are the Dr. Hong's teaching to Taijiman Dees. Looking back the 25 years, it would be easier if we just compromise and settle the tax bill with the tax agent. The money we spend on legal consultation and litigation is far beyond the original tax bill. Why we insist going through the long time consuming difficult wait, because this is a principle, because we cannot say or do something which is against our conscience, because we are doing the right thing. The tax agent imposed tax without legal basis, even breached their own statutory duty to look for evidence. We want to ask, on what ground the tax agent is allowed to issue tax bill based on unscrutinized indictment, which was unable to hold any ground and was disregarded during the trial. Not mention that the amount was fabricated by prosecutor Ho. When the time limit of a retention approach and the prosecutor was unable to obtain any solid evidence. He ridiculously applied the acquisition, raising goblin for prosecution. 
Doctor Ho was unlawfully detained for hundred and nine hundred hundred and fifty nine days. In two thousand two, the control yuan, the constitution institution in charge of government's ethic and behavior, point eight material violation of law of prosecutor Ho, including confidentiality of even of investigation, illegal search, illegal illegal freezing of asset, etc., and ask Ministry of Justice to take disciplinary action against the prosecutor whole. Again, that's not happened. So in the investigation report, the con the control unit clarified that it is rather improper to mention gobbling in an official indictment and the legal proceeding. Let this was the first instance in our judicial history, which was so ridiculous and severely harmed the reputation of our judicial system. In addition, Control Yuan also found that the indictment was inconsistent with the evidence provided, and hence the prosecution based on this indictment was against the rule of evidence. The rule of evidence. Procurator Ho also confessed that he did not carry out sufficient investigation during the control UN, uh, report. All of all, it's obvious that the Tajiman case was a false case from the very beginning. The National Test Bureau disrespected the court ruling and ignored the finding of seven material violations in the second investigation of control UN. The National Test Bureau also admit their wrongdoing doing of inadequate auditing. The Supreme, the Supreme Administrative Court recognized Taijiman is a Qigong group. In 2019, the National Taitation Bureau rectified five years of test bureau into zero. Evidence that the taxation ground for the test bureau did not exist and the lab all the test bill were void. Unfortunately, the check and the balance mechanism is not functioning well because the government agent still allowed to act on their own discretion instead of, follow, instead of following the rule of law and the court ruling. The battle to bring justice to Tai Chi is not only for Tai Chi Minh, but for social justice and fairness. We love Taiwan, we love the people in Taiwan, and we want to help the state to build up democracy, justice, fairness, rule of law, and a functional democratic mechanism. Tai Chi Minh case reflects the malfunction of check and balance in the government administration in Taiwan. The wrongdoer were not held accountable, such as Prosecutor Ho and the several official in tax agent. We want to ask how in a democracy country, the government agent could act on their own discretion, abuse the authority without any consequence. We like at the end, we would like to thank the support from our friend and expert and expertise in international arena. You are the brave warriors to fight for peace, conscience, and human rights. Let's work together to fight for Taijiman, for human rights, and for the freedom of religion and the behalf of all. Thank you. Thank you for this very much appreciated testimonial and analysis, Mrs. Chang. It's important to hear how things like this can go so wrong. And finally, we would like to hear from Dr. Ying uh, Jing Chen, um, who earned her PhD uh, at the National Taiwan University. She is an assistant professor and specializes in environment, water resource management, and environmental education. She volunteers to help in the case. For example, 
she's held lectures on campus to promote the Taiji Men movement in an era of conscience. We present Dr. Chen. Please take the floor. Thank you. Uh, dear honored experts and scholars, ladies and gentlemen, happy International Friendship Day. My name is Yijin Chen, an assistant professor at the university. I specialize in environmental protection. I'm also Tai Chi Men Di. It's my honor here to participate in today's forum to celebrate International Friendship Day. Although the epidemic caused a halt or disruption to people's mobility and activities, we witnessed the Earth system recuperate and rejuvenate during the year. Through the help of technology to shorten the distance between people, I'm grateful that we can still interact with our dear families and friends, brothers and sisters in time through the online video, care for and address each other. This is really not easy. 25 years ago, when I was 25 years old, I was in bad health and even worse pain in my mind because I saw the many man-made environmental pollutions in my work. Even though we have the technology and expertise to deal with the environmental problems, we are unable to stop the environmental pollution from happening again and again. I was frustrated with the human nature and felt my heart was being polluted. It was not until I entered Tai Chi Men under the recommendation of my dear school classmate and I received the guidance of my dear Shifu, Dr. Ho. Through both practice Qigong and cultivating my mind, I came to understand that if humans do not pay attention to the balance between technology and spirituality, then all things will be even. The answer to the environmental problems can be found just in the conscience of each individual. As Dr. Hong said, only with the conscience can there be love, and only with love can there be human rights, and only with the human rights can there be real peace. A conscience-based culture can create a sustainable society of love and peace. This is not only a driving force for the world peace and the restoration of the Earth's ecosystem, but also an opportunity for the sustainable survival of human beings and all living creatures, as we can see today. Another important inspiration for me at Tai Chi Men was that my Shifu Dr. Hong led me to a new understanding of the value and the importance of human rights. My daughter was suffering from cerebral palsy due to the lack of oxygen in premature births and unable to walk on her lower legs. When the doctor told me that my daughter had a health problems, I felt helpless and couldn't stop the tears. In the process of raising my daughter, one day Shifu said, even a child this young has her human rights, which inspired me a lot. When I saw that Shifu always treats his deeds with the equal and the same love, I was encouraged to treat and take care of my daughter with such true love. As this love grew, so did the child. Now my daughter is a 15 year old teenager full of positive energy and smiles. I'm so grateful to be in a Tai Chi Men big family through practice Qigong and cultivating my mind to make us better persons. However, for tens of thousands of Tai Chi Men deeds, the Tai Chi Men in just this case is just like a nightmare in our lives. The 25 year wrong, wrongful persecution and the illegal taxation of Tai Chi Men by the Taiwan government have seriously violated the rights to freedom, religion, belief, and the cultural freedom, as well as the poverty and the personal freedom. And it has hurt the image of democracy and the rule of law in Taiwan even more. My children and I have been participating in a street protest in front of the presidential hall more than 10 years, from 2010 to 2020, calling on the Taiwanese government to revoke the illegal tax bills. In Taiwan, people of similar age to me 
have experienced the 1988 lifting of martial law and the 1919 wild lady student movement during their high school and college years. This was the first large scale protest organized by students against the government with the considerable impact on Taiwan's democratic politics and leading to the first elected presidential and parliamentary election in 1996. However, in the same year in 1996, after the election of the president, the government began a series of political purge and the religious crackdown. And Tai Chi Man, which has never been involved in politics before, was innocently infected. This was really a lingering and a contradictory nightmare for those of us who embraced the democratic ideals when we were young. Why does a country we love hurt us so deeply? Is Taiwan really a democratic country? The Tai Chi Man case was instigated by persecutor Ho's unlawful persecution, who fabricated evidence to charge defendants with both fraud and tax evasion. The case was then forward to the National Tax Bureau, NTB, which issued a heavy tax penalties for tax evasion for years 1991 to 1996, simply based on the indictment by the prosecutor Hall. Since Tai Chi Man Qigong Academy was established in 1966, Zhang Menren of Tai Chi Man, Dr. Hong, has never been taxed by the NTB. So why should these six years be treated differently? Because of a religious crackdown by prosecutor Hall, Tai Chi Man was eventually acquitted which shows that the test bills have been invalid from the very beginning and the test bills should have never existed. On July 13, 2007, the Supreme Court told, determined that Tai Chi Man not guilty of fraud, test evasion, or violation of tax code. The Supreme Court also determined that the red envelopes to the Shifu front deeds were gifts by nature and the worst tax-free income under the Income Tax Act in Taiwan. In 2019, although the NTB corrected five of the six years of illegal taxes to zero, it still violated the principles of consistency and equality by maintaining the tax bill for only one year, 1992. And the tax bill was transferred to the administrative enforcement agency for enforcement and resulting in the illegal auction and confiscation of land belonging to Dr. Hong, my shifu, and intended for a sacred site of Tai Chi Man by the government in August 2020. We are very sad. This is only one truth. Tai Chi Man's rights were violated by the government through both the criminal and the tax persecution for 25 years. Who stole our use? When we suffer from the human rights violation, we still insisted on our belief in the truth and follow the guidance of our conscience. We still insisted on promoting the legal and the tax reform and the work hard for the fairness and the justice of mankind. In a sense, our youth was not stolen, but dedicated to the well-being of the world. In the absence of the case, we would have dedicated our positive energy wholeheartedly to helping the world reveal a culture of conscious love and peace and make the world a better place. So this is not only a loss for Taiwan, but also a loss for the whole world. As a teacher, a mother, and a Tai Chi Man did myself, I sincerely hope that Taiwan will become a democratic country that truly values the human rights and implements the rule of law, creating a social environment that awakens the conscience of all people, from those in power down to the people, to respect the human dignity and realize the social justice based on their conscience. Only when people are truly healthy in mind can we build a healthy and a peaceful society so that our children and grandchildren can be free from fear and have the true human rights in a fair and a just society. And we appeal for Taiwan government officials to be guided by their conscience. 
bravely face the prior mistakes and end the human rights violation. To do so is not only upholding the justice, but also an act out of our conscience to ensure the protection of people's freedom of religion, belief, and human rights. The government is obligated to offer the effective remedies according to the two international human rights covenants to stop the persecution of Tai Chi men, to return the ten to Tai Chi men, and end this human rights persecution tragedy. We very appreciate your support and concern for the Tai Chi men case. Based on the concept of one world, one family, I sincerely hope that the world, regardless of race, nationality, religion, language, and culture, can work together for the world peace and human rights at this meaningful time and realize the true friendship. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chen. We're so sorry to have heard about your daughter's demise, and we appreciate your sharing your feelings with us about your disappointing re uh, disappointment regarding the Taiwan tax authorities. And thank you for sharing your dreams about Taiwan in the future. This has concluded the part where we hear our witnesses. Again, thank you all for your voice against this injustice. Willie Fautre, I uh, defer the time back to you. Uh, Mr. Fautre from Human thank Rights you. Without Frontiers. Yeah, Th thank you uh, very much. Uh, and I also appreciate uh, this part of uh, uh, our discussions where the disease had the opportunity to share their uh, very moving uh, testimonies, their feelings, their sentiments about what they experienced uh, during all those years, all those years where there was so much injustice that was uh, inflicted to uh, Taiji Ben. Uh, I would like now to, to give the floor to Camelia Marin uh, from uh, Soteria International uh, for some comments maybe, and also for her conclusions. And if there are any questions uh, from uh, our followers uh, during uh, this uh, debate, uh, we will answer them with uh, pleasure. Camelia, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. And thank you to all of you for having this event together. Even though I'm working in uh, human rights field in Soteria since 2007, since 2012, sorry. Uh, I'm still impressed every time when I hear so many witnesses and their testimonies, which are so, let's say, imprinted with emotions and how actually all these cases change the life of those from the spiritual community where they are living in. And um, I will start just by um, saying thank you to all the witnesses who joined us for their testimonies and also very important for not giving up of the case during all these years because it's a very long case and Sometimes we are so enough and saturated with going again in the court and just trying again, finding a new solution. And sometimes we just feel to let, let it go. And it's very important that you are just continuing going forward for the case. Uh, also, I will start by um, briefly mention uh, how wonderful Dr. Uh, uh, Massimo Introvine and uh, Ms. Bobolenta brought highlights about friendship and how much conscience and friendship are related and how actually how much help the charity attitude uh, is supporting and um, creating the bridge between people, between organizations, between uh, different people in need of help. Also, um, I will add here, I feel to, to bring up the idea of morality because the human, uh, the human rights as such, they can be entirely respected when the morality is the one stepping up, when actually we understand, understand the core of what we should respect, not just to respect some laws by forcefully imposing, but to understand the core of the humanity and the core of the uh, human rights, the, the way in which the morality actually comes as a very natural common sense into the place 
And always when people put first the heart, which is also very much emphasized by Taiji men, then the connection, the friendship, the, um, I don't know, all these bridges and communication, interconnectivity between organizations, between uh, people, they start very much to grow. I noticed that uh, Dr. Hong works very much uh, on uh, morality, of course, in, uh, in his way, starting with uh, Yin and Yang explanations and how much the centering, the peace between the two is actually in need for having good harmonious lives. And uh, the fact that, um, uh, as it was uh, mentioned by Professor Introvine, the Dr. Hong was saying the lighthouse of the soul, actually, this is how we should go to the core of the things, starting from the soul. Afterwards, I was impressed by, uh, even if it is my co colleague, Konrad Svenninger and uh, also Hans Nut, how actually they were pointing out similar cases worldwide, how actually this is not only a problem in Taiwan, there are different countries with a high level of democracy where we can see such situations. And that's just like ringing a bell that there are some flaws in the system and somebody which honestly is us, we should take a stand, each of us. We see similarities in the cases and people unfairly judged First of all, no matter the decision of the court, they are unfairly judged by the public opinion, by all the mass media, and also lots of resources lost, thus diminishing the possibilities of the community to grow and to develop normally. So all these were pointed out in wonderful words in, uh, in this uh, webinar, and um, I just feel to add a few more ideas that I pre prepared beforehand. In these moments of crisis that we face today, people are naturally oriented themselves towards spirituality, searching for their inner peace and harmony. Tai Chi Man case, even though it's about a tax law issue, it is not, as it was said of one of the witnesses, it is not a private problem of Dr. Hong. It is a case rising a question of principle and of justice, justice and of course of religious liberty. This case, which is a tax case, actually is showing one of the problems of the system to let persecution and discrimination to be shaped as a private financial matter is somehow a problem that we should stand for, to not let this happen, even though the system through all these long cases, years after years, 24 years is enormous for somebody. Still, we should take a stand. The concern for the Taiji Man case, which, has, which can become a precedent case for the unfair biased taxation, shows the need of action and standing for human rights violations. Actually, in my view, this is the core point in this case, because if you accept such a situation, if you just accept to pay, then afterwards it will become a precedent <laughs> of um, spiritual organizations, communities which are there. This case of 24 year long injustice raised the question, how is possible for the Taiwanese government system that is not yet managing to rectify this breaching of the freedom of thought, religion, and belief. Even after 14 years after Tai Chi Man was acquitted in the court. Here, even though not from Taiwan, I, I feel to say that we have similar examples also in other areas like countries where sometimes the decision of the European Court of Human Rights take a lot of time to be implemented. The countries which receive such decisions, they delay as much as they can when they don't feel to do it. It's, let's say, an arbitrary system, an arbitrary situation, which is a need to point out that it is exist worldwide. Thus, the friendship and concern around the case 
can be an important way to help them, uh, the Thai Jimen and the Taiwanese government system and so on, see their flaws in the system. For the NGOs and other associations involved in defending human rights, it will be a good solution to develop awareness on the following. The importance of a holistic vision of understanding human beings, the importance of considering religious and conscious aspects underlying many conflicts, the importance of realizing that the foundation of the whole edifice of human rights is freedom of conscience with its accompanying right not to subject one's conscience to any foundation, to, to any other human being. Human conscience is what makes someone humane. Negligence of this foundation makes the whole edifice of human rights to become fragile. The violation to freedom of conscience expressed in civil society through government restrictions or through popular hostility against freedom of religion or belief are a significant factor of tension, conflicts, and sometimes the conflicts can escalate. And I want also to point out the wonderful help that um, you received also from um, uh, Bitter Winter and Massimo Introvine. The fact that, for example, to underline the work done around the case, there are two books, Who Stole Their Youth, and another book more recently published, The Tai Chi Man Case in Taiwan, A Bitter Winter Anthology. In the second book, is in, uh, it's um, included a scholarly perspective studies by non-members of Tai Chi Man, as well as articles about the Tai Chi Man published in bitter winter during time, which is a daily magazine dedicated to religious freedom. All this actually, they are helping to build bridges, to create this interconnectivity and to support the building the, free, uh, the friendship around Tai Chi Man cause. Underlining again that the two books insist on the global relevance of the Tai Chi Man case because taxation is the most convenient and common tool that the government of a democratic society can use to deny the religious freedom of minority groups. Building friendships around Tai Chi Man cause, besides giving the needed support at the right time, strengthen all of those offering the help by enlarging the view, by including in the hearts other spiritual searchers, and most important, in my view, offers the understanding upon the system's flaws and thus we can contribute in correcting them. If there are any comments or any questions, I was just letting some time to see if anybody's writing. If there is no question, then I will conclude, but we'll give some more time, maybe one minute for anybody to, to raise his hand or her hand uh, to, to ask a question. So I think it's indeed now time to, to conclude this webinar dedicated to the UN Day of uh, Friendship. And I must say that since we have started the series uh, of uh, webinars, uh, Chesnur and Human Rights uh, Without Frontiers, a lot of progress uh, has been made in terms of uh, awareness. Uh, the Taiji Man case uh, uh, is now known in Washington, in Brussels, uh, in Geneva, in uh, academic circles. And this is a major achievement because it was totally unknown uh, until a bit more than, than one year ago. Of course, a lot of progress uh, remains to be achieved uh, in Taiwan itself uh, to reach a solution. But uh, I'm confident that with uh, the assistance of the international community that has been now 
well informed about the situation in Taiwan, that we will manage uh, to find a solution, to find a deal with uh, the Taiwan authorities that are directly involved in this uh, unbelievable uh, and unacceptable situation that has persisted uh, for 25 years. So let's believe in it and let's keep the belief and uh, fight the good fight until we reach our final goal. Thank you very much to everybody, to the speakers, uh, to the witnesses, uh, to those who contributed to uh, this uh, great event. Also behind the, uh, well, people that we don't see because they are in preparing the, the technical side of uh, uh, this webinar, but I thank them uh, quite heartily for what they've done to make this uh, event uh, possible. Uh, I don't, I didn't see any other quest uh, can question. Can I talk, ah, sorry, yes? before yeah, please, please, this yes. end, I'd like to share wonderful news with all the uh, scholars and participants today. Uh, since we were in DC the 13th of July, and we had to publish, we have uh, three articles being published worldwide. And so far it has been reached out to 200, 200 countries. So uh, the three articles talking about uh, human rights violation to Thai Jiman and has been read and shared throughout so many countries. So we will continue to spread out our message in our cases and also we are hoping that more uh, scholars and more academic uh, professionals can also read and understand and support us. Uh, like uh, uh, Wavy has been very well uh, summarized uh, the achievement starting from last year and we all of the Thai German bees, of course, uh, our Shifu and all our Thai German bees are very, very grateful for your support and continuous efforts you have never given us up and we will never give them up as well. So, and you know, I, I really agree with what you summarized and we did achieve a lot of a good results. Yeah. And then a lot of people now, Geneva, yeah. Brussels, yeah. DC and, and, and Europe, they all know about our case. So it's a matter of how soon our government will, re will realize, will acknowledge their wrongdoings and ratify our case as soon as possible. I think all the sisters and brothers, all our, our members are really fed up. I think it's far too long. We have been bearing this suffering for so long, so many generations. So indeed, um, I think on, on, on behalf of all our members, we extend our appreciation to your uh, support and efforts. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay. I think we can conclude here. Yeah, and then we'll see you next month. On, yes. Yes, on August. Yeah. We have another event. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Thank that you so much. Down. Thank yeah. you so much. Take care. Take care. Yeah. yeah thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you. Yeah.